Good morning! Welcome back to part 2 of learning color spaces in Unreal Engine 5. In the first part we learned more about the tone mapper and why it's so important to turn off the tone mapper when doing your renders. In the second chapter you will learn how to work with the ACES color space. In this video I will simply just show you how to set up ACES in Unreal Engine 5 and the proper way to actually work with it in DaVinci Resolve. So here we are in our real engine once again. First things first, head over to the project settings up in the right corner. Here you will search for color and under the working color space, this is sRGB or Rec 709 by default, you will change this drop down to ACES and ACES CG. Enabling ACES in Unreal Engine isn't more difficult than this, which is very nice. So you simply have to restart the engine and you will be working in the ACES color space. Restarting the engine will recompile all the shaders. This might take a while, so sit back and just wait. Here you can once again see our scene with the overexposed spotlight. But the main difference between ACES and the tone mapper that we discussed in the previous video is that the tone mapper handles the gamma curve, which is the luminance or brightness from dark to bright. And ACES deals with the way color is treated. So now we'll do a version 3 render. So head over to the move render queue. One thing to note is that when you restart the engine, it won't save your settings for the move render queue. So either save a config file or you'll have to type in everything once again. We'll go back and create a version 3 folder for this ACES render. And once you have enabled ACES in the project settings, you don't actually have to do anything else. You can just simply hit render and it will render in the ACES uh, color space, more specifically the ACES CG color space, which is a completely linear color space designed for CG graphics. The render is complete and now we're in Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve once again. It's this step where things get a little bit more complicated. So we're going to have to configure the DaVinci project to make sure that we're also working in ACES in DaVinci. Head over to the project settings down in the right corner. To the left, select color management and change the color science from Blackmagic YRGB to ACES CC. Select the latest version of ACES, which is ACES 1.3. Unfortunately, you can't work in ACES CG, so we'll have to convert from one ACES to another. And this is where things can easily get confusing because you have to be really aware of the color space of the file at all times, in all stages. So if you remember, we rendered in ACES CG, however, we're now working in ACES CC. So these don't match. So select ACES CG for the input transform. And for the output transform, we'll select ACES CC. Now we get a completely gray uh, flat image, which is perfect for color grading. Head over to the color page. If you browse through the waveform and the parade, you can see we have so much information now. And in the CEI uh, chromaticity uh, window, you can see that we're now working in ACES. And ACES has so much more color than Rec. 709 does. Once again, we'll create a new node, and this will be our output device transform. Meaning that if you want to deliver for social media, for example, that platform will most of the time be an sRGB color space because most people watch uh, social media content on a sRGB monitor. Most TVs, however, are Rec. 709 color space and cinema projectors can be a completely different color space. Instead of doing our transform on the color space transform node, we'll do this on the ACES transform node. So, if you remember, we're still working in ACES CC now, and not ACES CG anymore. So select ACES CC for the input transform. So for the output transform, I'm going to select sRGB. But you want to select whatever color space fits your project needs. And as you probably can see down to the right, the spectrum of colors are incredibly more wide now. We have so much color to work with, and so much opportunity to grade the image to our heart's desire. Once again, I'll hit Shift S to create a new color node. And on this color node, which I'll rename to Color Corrector, I'm going to drag down the highlights of the sun and the lake. Because everything is still in a linear gamma curve, 
we should have all the light information uh, retained in the image. So I'm going to change from the primaries and hop over to the HDR uh, color wheels and I'm going to drag down the lights. So now you can see that we get our highlights back from the overexposed areas. Especially if you look at the rock. So beautiful. However, we still have one issue and that is that the uh, light slider affects the wrong areas of the image. We can change this by adjusting the zone graph. So if you slide this selector up towards the, to the right, you can see that the tolerance of light becomes less. So we will adjust this to make sure that only the sun and the overexposed areas in the water counts as light. And we'll just recover the highlights in this area and not uh, for the rest of the image. So after this you can do whatever color grade that you want to the image. And please be aware that after the output device transform, you basically lose all the information in the image again. So make sure that you do your grade to the left of that node and not to the right. As for rendering, there isn't really anything to take into consideration here. You can render to whatever file format that you want. So I'm going to do a simple H.264 MP4 uh, file format, for example, which will be in the sRGB color space. So if you're new to ACES and isn't really sure what I'm talking about in this video, I'll link a video down below by the amazing Victor Perez, which goes over the ACES color space and the many benefits of using it in greater detail than I can in this video. So I hope that some of this information was helpful to you. And as always, if you have questions, leave them down below in the comments and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.